Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, guys, we are live. See, I did it. This is The Difference Makers. My name is Justin Tamani. I'll be your host today. I know we've had a little break here with the semifinals. There's a lot of craziness in a busy few weeks there, but now we're back. Uh, today we have with us Freya Mooseberger. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm on big, like, got to make sure the name's the right guy. But Freya, not Mooseberger, not Moose. <laughs> it, Mooseberger, but that's like the German way of saying it. So, I mean, I'll let Mooseberger slide. But Brugger is... Brugger. You don't want the burger. No, but it's, I mean, it's kind of funny when people mess it up that way, but I just let it slide. Good. They did it right at Atlas. Yeah, they did. They got it right every time. So yeah. I was impressed. Yeah, they're smart. Friends are smart. <laughs> now, first of all, congratulations. Congratulations on qualifying for your first CrossFit Games. Thank you so much. How was that? Um, well, I knew going into the weekend that that was the goal. And so actually executing and getting my ticket punched, you know, that was the cherry on top, but that was also the expectation. So there was a a bit of stress that I put on myself going into it. And to finally, you know, it's, it was a goal ever since I started the sport to make it to the games. And now that I have, I'm I'm just super excited for the training leading up to it. And I mean, it's going to come pretty soon. I think it's like, what, six weeks away? <laughs> and I, like, I think you got six weeks of training here. Yeah, it's just going to fly by. And so I'm just going to try and relish the moment because it might be the only opportunity I get. Hopefully not, but I'm just taking my first time as an experience and gaining experience. You... Oh, we're back. <laughs> um i just got now, a fake time from request oh yeah get rid of them my mom. Mom. <laughs> oh your mom's calling you tell her i'm, I'm being a star right now I'm, I'm on a podcast no 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 <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that no no it's all good um so first uh in-person semifinal was yeah. the atlas games right like you've been at the or you did the Atlas Games last year, but it wasn't in person. Mm-hmm. What and then you did Waterpalooza as well. Yeah. I mean, I have to guess that this is probably the highest stress of competition you've been a part of. Oh, for sure. What was the major difference this year between Atlas and last year when you did Atlas? Um, well, last year my goal was to make quarterfinals. And so making semis, it was Woo, like this is awesome. I don't care that it's online. Like I'm just here for fun. Um, and you know, the workouts came out and it was high ro- volume ring muscle ups and legless rope climb. And the workouts were pretty tough and like a heavy snatch. And I was like, man, I don't even know if I can do these. So I'm, I just took each workout for what it was and just try to do my best um, and surprise myself. But I also knew that I had some big weaknesses to work on. Um, and also it felt like a quarterfinals 2.0 just because of the online format, Yeah. but then going into it, um, my whole gym, I mean, you, you've been at my gym, you've seen how supportive the community is. Community's great there. It's a big gym too. Yeah. They came and watched every single one and, you know, I, we knew that next year it would go back to in person. Um, and so I was like, you know what, this is a once in a lifetime experience to have everybody from my gym watch me compete at a semifinal. So, I mean, I just took it for what it was and I had a lot of fun with it and went with it. And then this year, you know, as soon as I finished semifinals last year, I was like, okay, I'm going to work my ass off so I can make the games next year. Now, when you made that decision to like work a lot harder, work your ass off, did you consciously is that when you started working with Michelle Latondra or was it before then? Yeah. So after semis, I was like, okay, what do I need to do? Make sure that I'm in a position to potentially qualify next year. Um, I knew that I needed to find a coach and good programming. And I've always looked up to Michelle and she's Canadian and, you know, the cards kind of fell into place. I, I reached out um, to DECA comp, their elite programming. Um, I was like, I'll just sign up for that and follow that programming. Mm-hmm. And 
Val reached out to me and then that's how we started working together in September. Okay. So a little bit after some, or after the games, I guess. Yes. Yeah. I wanted, I kind of let the full season go by and I was like, okay, now, now we're getting into 2022 season. Mm -hmm. Now you, you made that change. You started working with Michelle. Was it a fast change of, you know, your performance and like how you felt, or was it like a slow grind to feel like that performance was increasing or changing? Yeah, I think, well, in September, there was a long way to go and a, quite a big off season until we actually started competing. And so that slow growth was important. So I wasn't you know, burning out too early. Um, but I did notice right away things I've never worked on that she was implementing every day. And, um, you know, the change between doing a high volume day and a high intensity day, but not having it together. It was a very smart way of going about and making sure I got conditioned enough to compete at that high level. She is very smart with how she programs and how she, she goes about her programming. And uh, I can't say enough good things about Michelle. Yeah. But same. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both feel the same way there. Yeah. Um, now, with that being said, you do do a lot of the same programming as what Patrick Vellner does. Yeah, it's pretty identical for the most part, I want to say. Now, how do you feel uh, when you see the results and you see the numbers and you have to compare? Um, I mean, he's always the carrot to chase. And, you know, in the beginning, I was like, okay, he's the second fittest man on earth. You do not need to be at that caliber yet. Like, <laughs> just chill. Um, but... At the same time, when it's a good workout for me, I like to give it my all and see how close I get. And, you know, we I I like to say that when we were training together, we're both pushing each other in, in a different way. But it's always nice to work out with someone when you're constantly working out alone. Yeah. And I mean, even working out alone, like just comparing the numbers. Yeah. That's does that good. help you? Yeah. And even, you know, I'll. I'll uh, message him and reach out and be like, Hey, like, how did you approach this? And he's really good at giving a thorough explanation of the workout. And he's super smart, takes down split times in his head and is able to remember and uh, get back to me and, you know, help me learn from that. Have you learned a lot of those like little tricks from training with him for a little bit? Or are they things that like, yeah, actually like that week that we had together before, semis when I when Michelle and I went over to the island I learned a lot from that and I think you know it really helps me at Atlas just little nuances and mm -hmm. how to attack certain pieces and obviously we got our workouts before we competed so there's a lot of practice time that we had and you know ways to approach a certain workout I I wouldn't have been able to think about it myself but I had Pat and Michelle help me yeah. out now being around them more and more like that mental approach if you approached a lot of workouts especially even the the quarterfinals workouts when you approach them or not quarterfinals excuse me semifinal workouts when you first saw them on paper was the game plan the same as what michelle and pat were like you know directing you to do or was it more you're like oh i didn't think of it that way like are they opening doors for you that way yeah like how i interpret it versus how they and come together yeah. uh yeah similar I mean you know they have a lot more experience and so sometimes maybe I would approach a workout and go too hard right off the bat and then they would be like no 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 you don't want to do that you're going to die later so little things maybe even pulling back in the first couple of rounds just more than you want to so then you can push at the end um or for a good example on that GHD workout 100 reps is quite a lot of volume yeah and said you know you don't want to do 20 fast and then die down do each take each rep three seconds and just keep going the whole way and i was able to do that and that was the first time doing 100 ghds unbroken and while i was doing it on the floor i was like oh yeah like you got this <laughs> 100 ghds in the middle of that workout is no joke like you're like this sucks like i want to break <laughs> yeah did you get, you didn't get off the GHD at all? You just kept going? Yeah, I was super happy with that. Nice. That's 100 GHDs 
like every time I've had to do a hundred GHDs, even in a workout, I'm like crushed after. Yeah. I mean, that... I wasn't super sore after, but definitely did feel it. Uh, but I think just the adrenaline just kept me going. Yeah. Were you sore the next day after that workout? Cause that was, that was on Sunday. So you could kind of like sell your soul a little bit there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was pretty sore. I just want to go back to this. You you just qualified for your first CrossFit games. How do you feel right now? Do you, do you keep uh, doing that in the back of your head? Yeah, I I definitely am like, man, you're a CrossFit games athlete. Like that <laughs> I, I've definitely had that thought a couple of times, but yeah, it's it it's just been something I've been working towards for ever since I started the sport and I mean, I hope there are many years that I get to call myself that, but the mm-hmm. first time pretty special and I mean yeah it's it's like a a feeling that you can't describe when you're like on the floor and you're like yeah I did it (laughs) yeah was there I mean morning chalk up had you winning the atlas games was there a lot more pressure going into it after you saw that article come out or would you like bring it on I Uh, I know I'm gonna do well here it was very motivating um Mm -hmm. I but I knew myself and I knew the workouts. And I'm like, okay, that's the order, but mm-hmm. I'm just trying my best. And you know what? There, there are certain workouts that went above and beyond my expectations on the floor. And there are certain workouts where I felt like I underperformed, but that's the nature of competition. And, you know, if I didn't learn anything from that weekend, you know, was it, is it that, is it worth it? <laughs> because yeah. I learn now and then be able to take that into my training for the games. That a hundred percent. I couldn't agree more with you. You like you got to learn something from all of these experiences. Yeah. Now, with that being said, was some of the stuff that, that was on the floor is it things that you can help uh, that you can learn from to help prepare better for your workouts and prepare better for each event? I think so. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, the semifinal is different. Because there's the qualification at stake. When you're at the games, you've already made it. And so you don't really have a lot to lose when you're at the game floor. Um, and so, you know, for me, I've already changed my perspective on how I think about the games. I'm just excited to go there, excited for all the various tests. But the semifinal, you know, there's pressure for each event. There's only six. And depending on the points, you know, you really have to gun it for some or, you know, make sure you don't a lot and lose. Um, and so I've definitely felt a lot more pressure and stress on myself for the semifinal versus now I get to have fun. Yeah. Well, I think the semifinals for everybody is like, that's the focal point. That's the high pressure situation. Yeah. Did you feel like, you know, even going into Sunday, did you feel the pressure lifting or was the pressure more going into Sunday knowing you were sitting in a pretty decent spot? It, it definitely lifted as the weekend progressed. Um, and then by the last event, Michelle told me, okay, you don't need to take big risks. Just don't bomb, basically. I'm like, <laughs> so that was reassuring. And I, even though I struggled a little bit on that event, touching, making that last touch on the rope climb and running across the floor, I knew in, like, I knew that I had qualified. So it was like a very good feeling not standing there being like, Oh, did I do it? So, yeah. um, and then, uh, but waking up on that final day, you know, I was nervous for the chipper. I didn't know what to expect because in training that workout went very bad. <laughs> <laughs> and so on, on the floor, I finished the workout and I PR by three minutes and I was like, okay, like sweet. Like we got it like home stretch now. So, yeah. yeah. So was it after the chipper, did you, like you knew just got to do it and I'm in. Yeah. Like, could you, did you allow yourself to enjoy that m- feeling in that moment or were you still like pressure on last event? Um, No, I th- vaguely remember, I think going on for the last event, I was all smiles. Cause I was like, yeah, I just like, I can do this workout. I just have to run my race and finish strong. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I was disappointed dropping from third to fourth and in the end. Yeah. At the same time, you know, I, I gave everything I could and, you know, the weekend definitely caught up to me on that final event. 
<laughs> so yeah. now I keep fueling till the very end and finish strong. And it's not that I mentally checked out. I think it's just the accumulation of things and, you know, knowing that I didn't have to risk a lot on that last workout. Mm -hmm. I was very active. <laughs> Yeah, because it seemed like the positions of one, two were pretty locked in. Mm -hmm. Three and four, you and Caroline Connors were kind of pretty close. And then I don't know how Caroline Prevost was and how tight you guys were, but it was kind of like one, two were tight, two, yeah. three were tight, and then five was there. But yeah. like the top five were pretty much locked in going into the final day, it seemed like. Yeah, and we were all in the top five pretty much from day one. Yeah. Yeah, so it just kind of bounced around, like, who who was in order. Yeah. Now, from a – you said fueling in that. From a nutritional standpoint, like, do you make any changes based on performance and, like, how you felt? Or are you – have you started to consider things like that yet? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's all a learning experience, even quarterfinal, figuring out what works before an event. And um, I'm still – dealing with that and learning like what works well because after the second event on the <laughs> grew up everywhere and I'm not sure if that adrenaline crash or nerves or food or whatever but I definitely tasted some granola bar and pre-workout <laughs> so, I'm still working on that and um it's very hard to eat during competition like that is yeah. the worst part I have to say about competing I have no desire to eat anything at any point. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll cover a couple things here. You're, um, yeah, I, I saw you run off the floor and run straight to a garbage can. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's not good. And then uh, I turned around for a minute and yeah, apparently you, you had lost your lunch there. But that was a. Because what? Emily. Emily Beers from Morning Chalk Up came up to me and she was like, hey, can I ask you a few questions? And she like starts her recording on her phone and I'm like, one sec. And I like go to the garbage can. She's like, oh, I'll come back later. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. She didn't record you throwing up though. No, no. She's very, very respectful that way. Good, good. I had a picture of you like holding a garbage can at one point. Oh, awesome. <laughs> New profile picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but okay, so then real question is how many go-go squeezes did you eat throughout the course of the weekend? Uh, I had on average nine ten a day, I'd say. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Of the little ones or the big ones? There's big ones. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. The little ones are like well, the pouches. Little tiny pouches. Yeah, they're like that big. Yeah, okay. With, like cat. <laughs> okay, so like not not that bad like yeah. two of those is like one normal like adult serving yeah yeah they they call food i think portion size and puree yeah yeah but that was my line like i i can digest those anytime um and a lot of liquid carbs and protein shakes and lucky charms that seem fitting okay did you know they make a Lucky Charm Cinnamon Toast Crunch cereal that's pre-combined in the box. Like it's Cinnamon Toast Crunch squares with the Lucky Charm cereal? Yeah, it's both mixed together. Pre-mixed, okay. pre-mixed. You buy it like that. Nice. Cinnamon Charms? <laughs> I don't know. You got to talk to their marketing people because they did Lucky not do it well. <laughs> yeah. No, I had it the other day and I was like, well, you know, I guess I could just buy two boxes of cereal and make this myself, but oh my. it's conveniently packed in one nice box. I'm not sure how that flavor profile would work out. It's good. I talked about marshmallow with cinnamon, but it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm here for it. I, we, uh, did you we put bought... a story? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. That was you that yeah. did. Okay, okay. Yep. Nice. But then we ate that very quickly and then we just bought two boxes and mixed them together. <laughs> Because we couldn't find it again. Yeah, and then you get to control ratios if you put the two together. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was eating it cold and um, – or not cold, uh, dry. Okay. And I was sharing a bowl, and I just ate all the marshmallows. Yeah. And it... You always have to a couple of marshmallows. You don't want just the, just no. the plain old guys. 
no. <laughs> but I was left with that. And I was like, oh, man. And then yeah. somehow I ended with no Cinnamon Toast Crunch, no marshmallows, just plain old Lucky Charms at the end. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> um. Anyways, so what does life <laughs> back uh, off the cereal topic? What is your favorite cereal? Can I ask you that? Ooh, well, it changes. Like, uh, I was a Honey Bunches of Oats fan for a while. Okay. And, like, yeah. likes, but I think in competition, Lucky Charms, just that name brings you luck. The marshmallows are good. But if you don't want too much sweet, you can just go for those plain little guys, right? Yeah. There's some balance there, but uh, now we're going diving too deep into cereal <laughs> again. The, um, a cereal is is like my lifeline sometimes. Chex is good. They've come out with a few different flavors right now. Yep. I have yet to try the blueberry kind. Blueberry's all right. Okay. I do blueberry. Hey, you've tried it? I've tried them all. Okay. I like <laughs> apple flavor. Apple flavor Chex? Yeah. Or is it apple cinnamon? I don't know. I yeah. haven't had that one. I have to check it out now. It reminds me of the apple cinnamon Cheerios, and those remind me of my childhood. So okay, yeah. I'm gonna check that out because I need some new cereal in my life. It's I a great. Out... Uh, okay, we gotta stop talking about cereal. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Justin here. I'm really sorry to interrupt the show, but we're here to talk about something special. This is to talk about Bionic. Bionic is the first of its kind. AI-based motion tracking mobility test that's designed to show you what your body is really doing. We've designed seven unique tests that show you your range of motion for different joints throughout your entire body and how they work together. Once you're done the test, you'll be given a body map score, which breaks down your entire body and their different range of motion. From there, the Wadproof app will also design a mobility program specifically tailored to your needs and the things you want to improve. I can't wait for you guys to try out the test. Go download the Wadproof app today, start your free seven day trial and try Bionic today. All right guys, back to the show. Um, so what does life look like for the next little bit for you? Are you working? Are you just, are you in school or anything? Are you just training now? Like we're talking about leading up to the games here. Yeah. You got six weeks. What's the next six weeks look like? Uh, so definitely a whole lot of training. Um, I am a coach at the gym that I work out at. And so, I mean, I'm going to schedule to, you know, that works best for my training. But usually on rest days, I'll try to fit in more hours coaching. Um, also good blood flow, staying on my feet. And I stretch with my clients. So it actually works out to my advantage. <laughs> um but uh, I think there'll be a lot of more active recovery days where I have to travel to a location for an outdoor swim or, you know, get outside climbing, whatever Michelle gets us to do. So I think work is going to be pulled back just a little bit for those five weeks. And of course, it's crunch time. So I think everybody understands at the gym. They're just all super excited for me. Uh, but then, yeah, I think focus solely on training, putting my best foot forward at the games. Nice. That's yeah, perfect. I'd a lot. What's that? Getting outside a lot for sure. Yeah. Now with this type of thing, are you, have you considered like prioritizing doing a lot of your stuff outside? Are you able to do uh, like, you know, even weightlifting outside? A decent amount. Yeah. I think, um, you know, we have a turf, so maybe just try practicing lifting on that just uneven ground. And, um, you know, we, ha we can bring some mats outside in the parking lot and just see how that feels, you know, have to, have to figure it out on the floor anyway. Yeah. Uh, in the past, have you done any work with, a with the odd object stuff? Like, you know, yokes and sl yeah, like, I say sleds, sleds are kind of always in the games, but always in different capacity. Not a ton, but since working with Michelle, she on me to get my hands on a yoke. We have one at the gym. Thankfully, uh, we have those farmer things, the carries, the logs. Um, you have the logs? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of, lots of odd object equipment, which I'm sure I'm going to get my hands on. And we have a couple tires that I'll roll out and start flipping. <laughs> get ready for like the pig kind of thing. Yeah. And then Michelle's gym has a pig. So hopefully when I go to DECA, we'll play with that. Are you planning on going back out to train with Michelle for a little bit? Yeah, I think 
on my way to Madison, I'll stop in there, get acclimated, used to the and then for a week out there, see everybody, say hi, and head on over down to Madison. Nice. Yeah. Your climate in BC, where you are, is very different than what I think Madison is going to be. Well, it has a potential to be. Right now, it's pretty cold. Yeah, and it's rainy. <laughs> surprise. Yeah, 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 surprise. Here, it's supposed to be a lot nicer, which is a bit disappointing. But I think we're having a little bit of a turning point with the weather and you know, take every advantage I can and go outside. Nice. Is that when you said climbing, have you talked about doing like some rock climbing and stuff like that? Or are you talking about like obstacle course stuff? Yeah, we have a couple of obstacle course things out here. I mean, BC reputation, people, super nature, hippie, those odd obstacle course guys. We have a lot of those out here. Um, so just going to get my hands on that and maybe there's an inside climbing gym with different obstacles that I'll try. So anything to do to prepare, <laughs> I'm going to do. Nice. Do you have anybody that you train with regularly at home? Mm, I mean, the members will sometimes jump in on a workout. Um, the gym owner, uh, Nate, he is a cross the games masters athlete. So you know, he, he gives me my, or my money in cardio workouts. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll go head to head on some workouts, but for the most part, I'm alone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, for, for like travel and that, do you live near your gym or are you commuting in? Uh, just, or I roll down the hill and hop into the gym. Yeah. It's oh, not amazing. Yeah. You so I was at the gym with you guys during the quarterfinals, and you guys have one of the most beautiful like landscapes when you walk out of that gym. Oh, really? The mountains in the background. Yeah. I, I guess. Uh, granted, I mean, I grew up in BC, so the mountains are like there. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. like you walk outside and it's just like huge on a clear day, huge mountains. It just takes up the whole skyline. It looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, BC is beautiful. That's for sure. And I do definitely take for granted like the, the ocean and the mountains and, you know, the ever steady rain. <laughs> yeah. I will take the rain over the snow any day though. Oh, for sure. Me too. That's why I live here. <laughs> yeah. Now we talked about quarterfinals. So Pat was there during quarterfinals, but Ellie Turner was also there during quarterfinals. You guys had to spend or got to spend some time together, got to train together. Um, how was that dynamic, like training with another games athlete? Did you, was it motivating? Like she had a bit of experience. She had the year plus, you know, the Wadapalooza, the, the more um, elite circuit, I guess that year. Yeah. Uh, what was that like for you? Uh, so Ellie stayed at my house when she to do quarterfinals with us. And we obviously met it in Miami at Wadapalooza. And mm -hmm. then from there, our friendship blossomed at quarters and we had a lot of fun together and training leading up to that it was all laughs and fun but um we both knew that we were competing for different regions and qualifying for a different semifinal so we knew we weren't competing against each other but that being said during workouts we still gave each other a big push and it was really fun to do um i think it was quarterfinals workout number two together the ring muscle up one yeah uh, we went head to head and I mean, I wouldn't have gone as fast if it was, wasn't beside her. So, I mean, it's always fun working out with a, a girl or a guy of that caliber. And, you know, I was able to ask her a few questions about being a rookie because it was so fresh for her still. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing her now because we both qualified. So it'll be good to catch up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, how did you get started with all of this? Like, what is your background in? <laughs> Highland dancing. <laughs> okay. Highland dancing, you said. Yeah. It's Scottish across swords with kilts, bagpipes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, when did you stop doing that, though? Uh, so I stopped that in 2017. And then that was around the same 
time that I watched the Fittest on Earth documentaries, both 15 and 16. Uh, they were on Netflix and they just like popped up. I was like, oh, what's this? Like, I'll watch it. Yeah. Um, and I was in a boot cast from dance. So I had a oh. pretty injury. I broke my fibula in two spots. And so I was just resting on the couch and I watched this and I was like, wow, like these guys are freaking phenomenal. Like I want to do that. I want to look like Katrin David's daughter. Um, and so I was going through a rehab process for my injury from dance. Um, and she got me to touch a barbell for the first time. Like we were doing hang cleans, just empty barbell. Um, and, you know, I was like, oh, like, I just watched this CrossFit documentary and they did stuff like this. Like, what do you think about CrossFit? And she's like, you know what? You should, after you heal up, you should go try CrossFit. Like you're pretty strong, even in a cast. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, like I'll give it a go. And um, I walked into a gym and I think the first workout that I did was Karen. <laughs> oh, nice. Like this sucks, but it's really fun. Um, and I just kept going back and, I mean, upon walking in, I told the owner, I was like, I want to make the CrossFit Games. Like, bring me to the CrossFit Games. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, okay, like, hold up. Like, we have some work to do. Because um, I walked in and he was like, try pull up. And, you know, I could barely bend my arms <laughs> hanging from the bar. So, um, yeah, right from the get-go, I was like, yeah, I want to make the Games. So that's, I mean, that's really impressive because you you hear different stories about people, but right from the beginning, you knew like them, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Now I circle back, like that With feeling of like having your name called out, it's got to be even more special then. Yeah. Cause I've watched all the videos. Like I'm a diehard fan. I like all the regionals, all the games, like I've watched every single event and, um, you know, just seeing all the different stories of all the different athletes like i've gone i can feel their emotion through the screen and the story that they're portraying and i'm like wow like i'm just so excited for my moment and i had my moment and it feels really good and i mean i'm already on to the next thing like ready to train <laughs> yeah awesome uh, that's so cool i know with that uh to a degree like i know what that kind of feels like when you when you had your name called, did you know where Michelle was? No, but then she was on the sidelines, and I looked around. I looked at my family, saw some like I saw you guys, the photographers right in front of me, and then I kind of looked over. And I saw Michelle, and she was like waving at me, but yeah. she was like this, and I just kind of waved at her, and then she was like, "No, like come here." Um, and then I raced over and I, the crowd just erupted and that was really cool. Cause it's like a hometown crowd and they all, all know Michelle. Yeah. It's a really special moment to have in front of everybody. And, you know, I'm not sure if Michelle wants me to share this, but she had tears in her eyes and that just made me super emotional. And it was a really cool moment. And luckily I have a bunch of pictures of that moment and it's now my lock screen. <laughs> oh yeah. That's awesome. Oh, just brings a tear to my eye. Heels. Everybody. <laughs> I think everybody was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool. Awesome. Um, so training's coming up next. Anything else? What, what do you got going on? What do you do in your downtime? What are you going to be spending your downtime doing, like your recovery time? Eating cereal. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, I'm definitely going to, well, I ha I do take recovery seriously, but, you know, stay on top of massage, chiropractic work, physio, all of the above, theragunning, hot and cold, like all that jazz. So, you know, I, I have the time to do it and, you know, I want to make sure that I feel good throughout games training. And like Michelle said, there's going to be moments of doubt and fatigue and, all that. So I'm just going to make sure that I push through and stay strong. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I really Thank appreciate you coming on. And again, congratulations. Thank you. Um, if people want to find you, Freya Mooseberger on Instagram, <laughs> you can see it down below. Um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. All right. We'll see you in Madison. See you there. Mm -hmm.